in a desperate situation here. We have um, American landings and uh, successfully. I think they're going to be declaring war on Tunis very soon. So we need to get forces there. We also um, have a Dieppe style. Obviously, this is not in Dieppe. Um, expanding the war into the Netherlands uh, with a special forces raid here. We are, I don't know if our Dragnak Ost, our push east, is coming to an end and it's becoming a defensive war or whether we can create new offensives. I am very unsure of that, but we have a, oh good, Culloden scenario, that would be great. That would be great, Pixel. Cross of Iron map and counters. Okay, I'll take a look at those sometime, Fan Bishop. I haven't. I don't know. I've looked through the mods quickly um, a couple of times, but I haven't really dug deep into them. And um, I am happy to. I, I'm been having fun with this series and obviously this isn't how is gamer going to conquer the world this is how how is gamer fighting desperate battles um, and i hope it uh, continues to be entertaining to you but we may at some point start a new um, strategic command uh, series start over with using some mods that that's something of my idea if we decide to start over and that part of that's up to your your input but also um if you want to, whether replacing Strategic Command or just playing Other Days, because I'm always open to playing Other Days, let Slytherine know what you want to see, because obviously they want to sell games. And what does players have interest in it, in seeing and doing and learning about how um, they work? Uh, because various studies have shown that People watching somebody play makes them want to play that game more. So um, let let Slytherin know what what you want to see. And I, like I said, I'm happy to branch out into either different, you know, instead of this or additional uh, stuff. So let them know, and because we we discuss a little bit. Um, I mean, it's up to them what game is played, but. But we do do discuss, and they do ask for my input on things, because and they're and they're very smart. They don't want me to play something I'm either not comfortable with, don't like, or you know whatever. So basically, um, anything I'm playing, I at least I, I'm you know at least likes. It seems like it's a good game that I'm having fun with. So I don't know much about the Great Northern War. The Seven Years' War is something I do know a, a bit about. Um, my sort of 18th century, because of studying the Jacobites, goes up to, um, you know, 1745, 46 era. And then I sort of start picking it up again, looking at the American War of Independence through as sort of a continuation through to um, the Napoleonic Wars and how that all affects Europe, the fall of the French monarchy, um, how that all works together so um the you know seven years war i've read a, a bunch of articles and things on it but i'm not the deepestly immersed in it yeah that's great van Bi van, ah, van bishop that you can have a um look and feel mod because as you guys know that this is sort of my favorite you know, more or less. I mean, you can spice it up a bit, but counters and and similar sort of things. But other people will like the figures on on the map and read that so much more. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Um, I want to push here a little more. Okay, we can push up to there. We can push to there. We can push to here. Okay, I want to come around this, but I've learned supply, supply, supply. Okay, well, let's just push to here. 
not looking good at the moment. I don't know if we can cut their supplies well enough. The rain is saving them in Cyprus. Now, like, we have this desperate situation over here. So we've got to move forces. And um, being an American, um, we have learned from our British ancestry that the way to move around the world is via sea. As opposed to thinking like a continental power who would want to drive them there or march them there. Okay, so that's getting some reinforcements moving west. I want to get these guys to a port, so we're going to move the... Uh, again. If we want to move the artillery, we're going to move some fighter air power to help deal with some of the bombings in Rome and other places. I'm going to keep the bombers here. Do any of them that we can... We just moved him, I know. Um, still have these fighters. Don't know what I want to do about those. Oh, we can come down and take this. We can supply that way, so that will help with that. Get them a little bit more coming down that way. I'm going to push here and hopefully that, well, not cutting the supplies as much as I'd hoped. I know there's a garrison force there, so I don't, well, might as well hopefully move in without major contact. Okay, good. Just wanted to put some pressure on that. Hi, Sko Kolo Sko. I'm sure I'm butchering that. No, nope, not Thursday. Um, the the change is at least partially due to um, Easter holidays, so they move this up. Um, and I'm very happy to be playing here today, so good with me. So yeah, unfortunately, um, well, I don't know, I may be doing something on my Twitch channel on Thursday since I won't be doing anything here, but I'm not sure of that. Um, and of course, I'm hopeful that those that are looking forward to this on Thursday and not here today will um, get the video on, watch the video on demand on Twitch just later and obviously won't be able to take part in our conversations but be able to watch. Hello Raven UK 12. Okay, well, now for some reason we still have which uh the Sharn horse here. We're going to move it further hide it in the ice. Now, um I feel like being risky. What do you guys say? Should I attack the, with the submarine against the heavy cruisers? Give you guys a minute or so to respond to that. I'm, I'm not sure. I want to come after these guys, so let's... Well, hello, Soviet destroyers. Uh, okay. Okay. Risk away, no. Mm, okay. Hello, warrior donut. You're crazy. Well, the reason I'm considering it is, generally speaking, historically, um, heavy cruisers did not have um, anti-submarine capabilities, where light cruisers generally had some but limited, and destroyers were the primary killers of submarines boom okay we'll head you back to that port for the moment boom heavy cruiser let's see if you can get there and do that 
No, not fully down. Okay, um, we'll move in the battle cruiser. Not worth it, usually a British carrier. Okay, okay, carrier will punish them the next turn. Let's see if we go down in flame, so it maybe runs on five. Okay, game, what stats? Have the year, I don't know the... Yeah, I'm gonna take your advice about the um, idea of a carrier may be doing that. Well, let's do this instead. Let's go commerce rate. Ah, how many how many Soviet destroyers are out here that I happen to run into? Wow, wow. Wow, yeah, I got away lucky with that, but man, wow, that that didn't go as as hoped. Wanted to get out onto the um, lines without them seeing me. Yeah, mm, that's tough. Okay, let's move you down to the port so that we can get you on transports next turn now we have these guys to deal with since we're facing more and more possible invasions I think we're going to because this won't be a whole lot of points but spend the points now maybe the AI won't ever invade Norway and maybe this is a waste but Okay, that's already up at five. We'll do that. We can always, if we th truly think we're not being invaded, we could see about pulling out the core, replacing it if need be. Is there partisans probably showing up there if that goes away? Yeah, maybe. Um, we could always move in the garrison unit from down there, from Kristenstad. Up, um... Let's improve the quality or size of the fighter unit there. So now, well, we need to move him. Okay, we face a likely Soviet counterattack down here in places I really come to the opinion that mech core or whatever these are because they don't have a, a specific um, unit size but seems to be rather weak for everything they seem to be weaker than cores or you know infantry cores but we want to see what we can do in killing this one here. Okay, that can just about get it. Um, I'd like to take out that. Well, okay. Um, let's pound it with railway guns. Maybe we can do... No, but we probably reduced its Okay, I want to take out that army Well, always look for um, sales. I highly recommend that. Raven. Um, okay, that's now down at three. Possibly, I'm going to retreat you. Yep, interceptors, we should have escorts, good. That will have effectively lunch well, not that badly. Actually, we got hurt worse. Ouch. 
And... Okay, that was effective. Okay. Mm, one for one would have been worth it. That wasn't so good. Yes, they um, they can strike twice. That is very true. That may be coloring my thinking when I'm not thinking about that. I'm just because I'm looking at some of these um, these guys. Like, just maybe I'm not using them well. Ooh, there we go. Boom. One, two, throw stuff gone. Mm. Infrastructure is torn up too much. Well, I'm not going to leave him out here. Oh, um. So we're going to withdraw him. Mm. Yeah, I think to just there. Huh. Really wanted that dead. I don't like that it retreated out. retreat back or I'm not going to take this out <clears throat> but I can move up that so yeah give some artillery or rocket support troops there on the front line oh I should have fired them well I don't know they probably would have locked them in place Yeah, um, comparing the two, uh, between uh, Strategic Command World at War and, and Strategic Command War in Europe, if you want to play Germany, or if you just want to focus on Europe and you don't really care about uh, or want to manage uh, all that's going on out in China, which is a big thing to manage, just in China, as well as the Pacific War, I think, I believe from playing excuse me, both, that war in Europe is a better game. If you want to either, if you're mainly playing as Germany or you just want to focus on Europe because maybe, you're, you know, you want to play as the Soviet Union where you have to play the, all the allies, but you want to focus on this, get the war in Europe. That does the war in Europe and, you know, the sort of region around it better than this. But if you want to play the whole world, Obviously, this is doing better than the war in Europe. So, um, if we were just going to play, you know, focusing on Germany, I would rather be playing the war in Europe version. So, keep that in mind. No, they don't defend well. That's part of my problem, uh, Willow Bear. Um... They just, in this game, they don't seem to defend well. Um, tack all, all right, especially with the double attacks, but it's just not what I would be looking for. Yes, okay, let's have the Italians strike there. Okay, they fell back to there. Let's see, can these guys, no, they can't make it. We can move up this armor unit and hopefully destroy them with no damage. Very good. As Figuring we'd have at least minimum damage, but that works too. Keep him from getting surrounded. Because this is one thing that I've learned, that if I left my armor out here without coming out here, it'll get um, pounded from all hexes around it. So that's what I was worried about, leaving him out here and having everybody come in and pound him. But pulling it back here, 
Yeah, you can get pounding from two hexes, but that's it. And depending on action points, movement capabilities, whatever you want to call them, um, whether, you know, this core can move up, hit, and retreat, and another, you know, the cavalry core can come in and hit and retreat, and maybe, you know, the heavy armor come up here and hit them or something. But by limiting their frontage, um, doesn't make them invulnerable, may still be taken out, but is not. Oh, there are definitely advantages. They are more mobile, but they um, run up a lot more uh, supply needs to keep them mobile than infantry. So um, I definitely like them. I just... And I've... And I have looked at the manuals. I haven't read it. I'm really not absolutely sure, and I don't even know if the creators are absolutely sure, because you sort of switch a little bit on scales and numbers of units from the War in Europe version to the um, World at War version of the game. Because as we were talking about, um, oh, I think, one, like, I think it was Nancy here. When you start out, Nancy is the second province in from the German border in um, oh, the World at War version, but or not second, uh, second uh, hex in. Sorry, sometimes I jump back and forth between provinces and hexes, various games. Um, but in the just as sort of a a, a compare point of comparison, it's the third hex deep in Nancy is from the German border at start. Obviously, the borders move forward because we've occupied Alsace and Lorraine territory loss to Germany in the First World War. Uh, so it's obviously right now on the border. But just to give sort of the, the scale and, and point of comparison, so in my again, in my opinion, people can debate this. Um, the um, war in Europe scale of the map allows a lot more um, tactical maneuvering situation here where here it really to me I mean they do a lot of really good things with this I trust me I'm not trying to knock or downplay the game I've really learned that railroads and roads secondarily are very important because if you notice I'm not pushing strongly across here and neither is the enemy because we're going to run out of supply but we're pushing along these rails so they're getting the essence of the critical elements of fighting whether on the eastern front or other places but by reducing the number of hexes on the map making a bigger map so there's actually more hexes but you know what i mean um for for the same geographical area reducing the number of hexes limits the um you know the to, at least in my experience the ability to do um you know uh, form pockets on attacking the enemy because I was really trying to do push in with armors form pockets and I got I lost so much armor and mechanized forces just simply running out of supply and literally couldn't move them and sometimes bad weather whether the, the mud that's down here or the snow and that definitely should contribute to things I'm not going to um, say that it shouldn't but it does that was part of it but so that I've just quite honestly given up on the idea of um, like trying to push to um, Leningrad with my armor and cut these guys off because I think the Soviets are just going to come up with infantry armies and my tanks aren't going to be able to defend themselves well enough because they're going to be out of supply and I'm just going to get lost. Where I think I could do that better and I remember doing it better when playing the War in Europe version. So, just keep that in mind as which version of this, if you want to get one of the versions you want to see about getting. Okay, you've already operated. Just want to see if we can reinforce you. Let's see. Um, Yeah, I I can't really recommend I can't because uh, I don't know the pricing on the bundles, so I um, go with what some of the other people are saying and you know read and fig figure this out.
Yeah, Van Bishop, I'm I'm sort of agreeing with you um, with this. So I I just don't see them as being as useful as I would like because what I want to do is you know if this was the beginning of the turn and here's the units I want to move these guys in and surround these units and I think I'm just more in danger from lack of supply um, before they will starve even though I have what I would consider um, a continuous line of you know control and supply and maybe not enough supply in the sense of being able to then you know um start another offensive you know enough extra fuel and ammunition to go on the offensive again but i feel that i'm gonna um, die just defending myself if i create pockets in this that's sort of how i'm feeling with this right now and um okay here um yeah, we'll just hit that. Weaken that somewhat. But I don't want to move this guy up. I'm going to move him to the road to get better. Now here, our Slovak troops have been valiantly fighting. And I think we'll get hit a bit if they look too vulnerable. So I'm going to move the armor just up to here again. Because I don't want to... Hey, Fair Oakenshield. Good to see you. Um, don't want to get them too isolated out into the front because I just think you know they're really good at limited attacks and we will do some of that right up in here and right now okay we've been taking down um, a lot of their armies I mm, We want to max that out. We have some escorts down here still. Okay, these guys are going to fall back to here. Okay. Thanks, Pixel. And hit that. Hit that. Okay, now, um, now let's swap these two out and hit again, though not successfully. Okay, well, um, you move up a little bit there. You, yeah, we'll just reinforce. Probably not much, but yeah, one. Can these? No. No, they're at max. I'm going to withdraw you because I'm going to withdraw these guys. Yeah, we'll come all the way back to that. Now, weak Panzer Group, I agree, should be a, you know, not a good thing to leave on the front, but so long as you have a reasonable amount of supplies, it should be a deadly thing, even defending terrain. Okay, um... Right. Well, we've done some serious damage to them. But no, we're not, you know, pushing to Stalingrad or we're not taking Moscow. And part of that is we're going to come over here. Right, obviously, we can't do anything with that this turn. But we can sort of deal with... We have one army and some Hungarian air coming. But... Let's see, we're going to go with 300 points, 
looking yeah special forces engineers rockets what's available that we can still we'll purchase that and we're going to go with another one um, so we've got we're gonna have three armies coming for Germany Italy what can we do with Italy here um, we now have saved up enough points to really build something heavy tanks heavy tanks uh, oh those are fighters um, 300 that would only leave us 18 points fighters advance 275 Hmm. I'm afraid to ask you what I should do because maybe you're going to give me advice of what to, to best burn me down. Hmm. We've lost. Well, if we're going, we're going, we're going to go heavy tanks, I think. Um, because if we just do regular, because we lost one of those uh, Centauro um, over partially my stupidity, but um, over in getting the Middle East. But there we go. Okay, down to eighteen now. So that will. Let me check. Have we? Yeah, we moved all these guys. Again, that you really sort of need to keep checking things because if I don't, I'm going to forget stuff with this um, large. Now, I'm going to buy cheaply two more Chinese garrison units because I want to move up some of these cores that are not core, but um, HQs that we've been um, keeping back as sort of garrison troops. And by doing the Chinese. Um, units we don't have to pay the expense of shipping them out of um, Japan uh, well I guess we're going to fly these guys to here So now down here, um, these guys bumped into people coming along Australia, so or ships, so we're going to come out that way. I know they're weakened, but hopefully, they'll still do some. Yeah, we're spending a lot, but we're going to, oh, can these guys, yeah, these guys can come here. Increase our strength down here. Get them to move a bit more forward. I think we've done, this is impassable and basically was at the time for any major shipping. Yeah, it does make the, the German breakthroughs harder. Because basically it really does come down to a um, slugging matches between armies. Because this game doesn't have unit stacking, uh, and I agree with some of the, the stuff, because you don't want a stack of, say, four armies stacked in one hex and keep just bashing around. That That's overkill. But because you can't stack, say, two core um, units, which is sort of like an army, um, in one hex to, you know, be a more solid either attack or defense, the ideas of, of an army unit here are very good. Um, fully in support of that. It's when it comes down to the idea that 
if your whole front line is just going to be made up of armies that you're trying to slowly World War I style push your way through the front, it loses a bit of its of the real finesse of, of the Second World War. We're going to come here. We're going to attack. Ouch. Oh, yeah, a little more than I was come back to the port. But I don't want to just... I mean, the point of having them here is to continue to eat on them. And since rain is, I just since rain is um, keeping us from attacking here in Cyprus effectively this turn, let's see if we can take out this destroyer. There we go. Ouch. Yeah, get back so. Protected on the far side of the Suez since we control it. They can't come through there. Oh, yes. Um, for those that aren't used to reading this, and I know it can be a bit hard for some is the um, models maybe um, doesn't affect uh, any of the gameplay elements. It's just purely, you know, human recognition, eye candy, as it were, um, what you want to see and like and read as you will the best. Okay. Well, we spent a lot of our uh, MPP. We've pushed on that. Let's see, is there anything left that we want to try to... Yeah, a little bit here. Um, okay. Northern China may be a bit of a mistake for lack of supplies again, but I don't want to give up on... pressuring the Chinese from there, especially since their capital moved up to here. Light armor. Good. Ouch. Um, yeah. Having an army here will be better defensive from those. And good. Well, push them back. I don't know if that's good. I'd rather maybe have them up front to pound on them a bit more next turn. Yeah, these guys have already attacked. Too low to really move some of those guys out. And MPP. Um, mm. Fall back a little bit. And... I think I'm going to come back here to hopefully reinforce that with better supply there. Okay, that looks good. I think we are ready to see what sort of damage they can do to us. Communist partisan activity in China. Well, that's sort of why we're holding Peking with the HQ. Okay. Bringing in lots of MPP from everywhere. May not be enough, but it's... Something. Okay. There. Yeah, I was planning. U.S. declares war on Tunisia. They're moving up a uh, British HQ. They're reoccupying Rostov. Oh, good. They moved the light armor back into the trap. So 
They're falling back. Hmm, good, bad, not sure. Yeah, dive, 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 dive. Oh, no. Neither happened. So I don't want him to die because I figure there's other British units that'll come up here and attack, but maybe not. Hello, destroyers. What are you doing shore bombarding destroyers? Really? Okay, carriers. Now that I understand, especially if there's going to be an invasion soon here. Um, okay, interceptors. Good thing we're, we're getting more out here. Escorts. Are they are, well, February 43, that's sort of early for D-Day, but maybe they're doing it. I know they're doing their DF raid, maybe they've... They're sure going after this garrison. Like I say, they're sure going after this garrison. Wow, this is interesting. Well, going after the destroyers in port. The only reason they're still sort of there. Battle cruisers coming after the destroyers in port. We're getting munched. Yeah, we're going to see if we can, the coastal gun can deal some damage to them. Someone told me, don't know if it was on a live stream or commenting on one of my videos for this game, that the AI isn't very aggressive. Huh? This is looking aggressive to me. Well, maybe not as aggressive as a human player would be, but... All that stuff down in the channel, particularly. Okay, yeah, well, that's why we kept some interceptors over here, because I knew they had some aircraft. Unless they'd moved it out, which I'm not always sure if they had. Oh, good. A unit just strong enough to, to shatter when first bombed. Okay, interceptors, good. Escorts, yeah. Yes, good interceptors. Good, good. Right. really would like to get the reports of the damage it's doing during the AI's turn for the air battles. Maybe I wouldn't like it because it wouldn't be good good results, but I'm still curious to see what, it, what the results are. Well, Raven, if it's a good game, you know, a well-built game that's simulating World War II, it should take... It really, Unless you're going to play it on some super easy level, it should take a few playthroughs to really... Ouch. To really learn the game. You know, it takes me that to learn, to learn um, the game. Because you're watching the first playthrough I've made of... The world at war, war version uh, of this game, and I played the uh, War in Europe version a bunch before this. So you know, don't don't get discouraged if you you know need to make a few restarts and learn from your mistakes. 
There's a bunch of YouTubers, including myself, that you can look back and see earlier episodes of of this game. You know, um, you know, invading Poland or invading France or whatever. Oh hell, hell no, hell no! Look at what that got. Oh God! Oh, uh, 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 what the? You guys see that? Just took out Hamburg. Marched around a mechanized core that didn't have a zone of control to do that? What the? Uh. Hello, Pit Fiend. I'm having a heart attack over here that Hamburg just fell. Well, those At Italians are taking a pounding this turn. Looks like they may survive, but... Yep, expected the American armors pushing down through Tunisia. Sure thing, Raven. Ha <laughs> Sterling Steve, yeah. Howdy. Uh oh, uh oh, an uh, assault transport. Yep, Tunisia surrenders. Okay, you're blockading Port Bordeaux. Not that we would. Matters overly much. Okay, well, 
they lost 7, 10, 7, 11, 17 MPP from my sub, so those are doing somewhat effective. And they've got an artillery unit there. Destroyer patrolling out there. Okay, Führer Hemp Quarters. Among the many thousands of prisoners we have taken is a senior um, Red Army officer, General Vasilov. Vasilov? I'm probably butchering his name, sorry. Um, heard of him, of course, but I don't know the best pronunciation. Who is rapidly becoming a leading figure in promoting anti-Bolshevik messages to his fellow countrymen. There are already thousands of former Red Army soldiers serving in our army. We could make use of Vaslov to raise a specific Russian corps to assist our struggle against um, Stalin's regime. Uh, with your approval, uh, this full strength corps will deploy at Minsk at a cost of 100 MPP at 50 MPP. A turn for two turns, would you like to authorize this information on the um, Russian Army of Liberation Corps? Okay. Yes. From early on, um, with the German invasion of the Soviet Union, German military units start accepting Russian volunteers from soldiers giving themselves up. And I say it that way because they are not necessarily captured soldiers, but they do include captured soldiers, meaning sometimes soldiers are just like, hey, sort of defecting from, you know, and, and sometimes in, in fairly large units, um, defecting from Soviet forces when they get a chance to do so and defect to the Germans. Early on, the situation is um, a lot of the, the German divisions and other sized units need manpower. So they accept the Russians in as volunteers. In some cases, just giving them an armband, which was sort of standard, um, saying, I'm in the service of the Wehrmacht, uh, which you also see various other um, uniformed Germans, though, that are not, because just about everybody in Nazi Germany um, by around 41 has a uniform of some, port, some sort. Um, but, you know, that would, could include people like the SA or something else that are not specifically a military formation that they just put on the armband to then turn it into a military uniform from simply being a uniform. Also, early on, a lot of times they would be given German army jackets. Officially, they're supposed to not have the German army eagle on them, but just that to actually sort of wear over their Soviet uni uniforms. And as time goes on, they get more and more German equipment. And as their um, old Russian stuff wears out and a lot of because they're not trusted, because also they don't speak German, because they're not trained to fight like German soldiers, both as a you know individual soldier and as his units, they're given the sort of grunt work of the formations that they're joining. Uh, you know, carry artillery shells, help with the food, um, dig trenches, dig dig a lot of that stuff. Um, and as time goes on, as trust builds, these guys are armed. Uh, you know, generally lightly armed, and they do fight. So that's going on now very much as this event is talking about, um, they do form this Russian army, uh, Russian uh, Liberation Army. Um, I don't think they ever let it fight in a formation larger than a division. And even that I'm sort of dubious of that it, even that big, not that there weren't core or cores or even an army, meaning multiple cores, size of headquarters and numbers of troops and units but they never wanted the germans never wanted to partially from you know the experience of watching um you know romania and italy get when they have too large a section of the front get smashed by the russians partially it's it's that um you know that they want to intersperse german units with it and partially it's just, you know, whether on defecting or, you know, back to the to the Soviets or other things, they never really want to have it fighting in large formations. I would say most of the time, even the, you know, mid later stages when it was fairly large, um, 
they wanted to keep it fighting in sort of the um, brigade and battalion levels of um, units so that they would, although, you know, create a division, give it whatever number, its battalions would be spread out everywhere that would be attached to other German divisions. And so now that at that point, these battalions would be real sort of combat front line um, units, often s equipped with um, Russian equipment still, you know, f small arms. Germany has a desperate problem for all levels of arms. They never have enough rifles. They never have enough pistols. They never have enough artillery. And it's not just, oh, well, we have this extra stuff. Well, we might as well, you know, put it in the, the West Wall or the um atlantic wall or something like that because we have the guns and the ammo might as well use them no they just never have enough machine guns enough pistols enough rifles so you can easily see photos of luftwaffe um personnel i'm trying to say it that way because there's also luftwaffe divisions that are given really nice german equipment but german uh, luftwaffe uh, personnel um, taking a break out in some sort of field there and all their arms are, you know, uh, rifles are stacked in, you know, the sort of triangle style, you know, multi gun stacked up there and they're almost in the gaunt rifles. And so this, I don't know what type of lift off a unit, whether it's a air base security unit or ground crew, but because they're on the Eastern front, they're all issued rifles just because things happen on the Eastern front. So, but these German lift, German Luftwaffe personnel, they're given Russian rifles and which need Russian ammunition because Germany just does not have enough Mauser 98Ks. Uh, so when you're starting to equip um, dubious foreign units, they're definitely getting that type of thing as well. So yeah, we'll take it. Okay. As you can see here, that guy you can see from his collar band is a um, a Russian. Oh, went away. Sorry, um, but he does have a German eagle on his breast. Some units did, some didn't. So we have that. Okay, good. Well, um, I guess we can move. Mm, 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 mm. Well. I was going to say when I was also looking at that, that photo, you saw one of the guys that have the patch on it, and it's it's in Cyrillic, but it sort of kind of looks like POA, and it stands for Russian Liberation Army. Well, when because, again, worrying about defection and other things, quality of troops, they often use these guys as security troops, and some of them were stationed out on the Channel Islands, and the British occupied British people there called them because of that pals of Adolf. Ah, uh, three days. Okay, bank made appear between the rock and our place. Vassal, I'll start. Yes. Um, hopeful temp. We're not running out of military equipment. Try not to be at war with the entire world. Very good, Steve Sterling. That is a good thing. Yeah, um, the Luftwaffe field divisions, the German army had very little respect for all of them, very little respect for all of them, except for the Hermann Goering division. Um, that was um, a good fighting unit. Uh, they were a real sort of waste of equipment because they were often given very new, very good equipment because of whether you want to call it budget or simply Goering's influence. And so that would be a different type of formation than some of the photos I've seen of just lift off the ground personnel that have rifles. And, you know, whether they were, you know, the photo taking a break from, because I'm picturing some guys taking a break, setting up a new Luftwaffe base, presumably on the Eastern Front, you know, somewhere on the Eastern Front, or whether they are, you know, security troops against partisans or whatever. These weren't so much, you know, a proper combat division, but they were, tr they were troops that are Luftwaffe, but they're not necessarily, you know, the the divisions that they were shifting personnel over.
Right, yeah. Well, Stalin goes on to disown his own son. Okay, well, you see, this is... Now, I don't know because we talked earlier about the ability to attack twice with this mech core, but I've got a mech core here that's going to lose to a, a special forces core, so I'm going to retake that just so I'm not out of supply. And so we're going to move him... Oh, hell. Um, we can't operate him either. Put him on trains. Okay, well, we'll keep him on the railways. Maybe we'll do that. This is... This is not good. This is not good. Yeah, it has zero supply. I'm sure that's probably um, a real element of it. Uh, I'm sure. Okay, well, these guys are going to get supply again. Well, let's move. You there. Let's come. We're going to occupy the fort. Come there. These guys get on board your transports. And yes, they can make it. Get off. Okay, well, we've, in a limited fashion, stabilized the... How bad is that supply? I didn't even look. Okay, zero right now, but next turn. Okay, four, two. That's good. So that should hopefully keep... Keep that somewhat stable there until we can get more down. Okay, well, let's move back. So hopefully, they won't be hit there. And we can get the mechanized core there. Okay. Okay, well, let's go for some happy good news. Well, we've re-liberated all Italian territory that's, you know, effective. Um, okay, yes, I knew they would be there. Okay, let's see if we... Hitting S for supply. Okay, they would still have some supply if I come down there, so... Not a lot, but this is my instinct to cut them off because that's generating a certain amount of supply giving supply down to these guys down here um, okay well yes the Czech Legion and its story of its moving across the the railways to get to Vladivostok is a very interesting one. Oh yes, well now, compared to the um, Russian Liberation Army, one, the, the Czech Legion obviously didn't have to liberate Czechoslovakia, it was just fighting for its survival along, you know, the railways uh, here moving east. And also, all the people that fought, mostly the Reds, but um, various elements, knew that the Czech Legion, eh, there was no, you know, great desire to destroy it in the sense that um, it was essentially on its way out. Now, it was partially by um, Churchill, at times, encouraged and did uh, strike against the various... Red Army units as it was moving its way across, but it actually earlier had done a deal with um, the Reds to um, get some equipment and start moving east, uh, realizing that if the the Soviet government or you know the the Bolshevik government at the time really didn't allow it to happen, they would just be a continuous thorn. So. As they moved east, they did sort of strike at various red elements. Some of their elements got trapped at times, and they would then 
move back along the railway and you know relink up with their forces and keep moving and keep going back there so so i'm sure when they're attacking you know some red element those red elements were going to fight to survive um no doubt about that and fight well but for the reds it's just give them time they're leaving you know so and they're you know so they're heading out and that kind of thing would be a a, a non um situation compared to the russian liberation army which is trying to liberate the soviet union and they have to you know they weren't an ethnic liberation element other than simply russian and the soviets aren't going to allow the existence of a russian you know force you might theoretically you know if the war ends in a different state allow a you know baltic states or something else because the existence of a baltic state doesn't mean that um it's a you know a, an opposite situation of the soviet union where if you have a russia and a, and a you know a a an, uh, a Soviet Russia and a non-Soviet Russia, whatever the non-Soviet Russia would be. I'm not saying it would be a democracy, but whatever it would be, would be a, a counterpoint that Stalin and crew couldn't allow to exist. Oh, yeah, and I didn't even think you're right about the, the various World War II um, Czech legions. Um, one was made up of... Um, gulag camp personnel primarily that um, the soviets had been working to put it kindly um, forced labor kindly that they allowed um because they realized because the basically at least most of the czechs there was uh, through most of the war there was some communist czechs that uh, this fought alongside the soviets but most of them march out um through iran somewhere i think in iran or somewhere they pick up a bear um a, a real bear and um it becomes a mascot and they fight they get out get equipped by the british and fight in italy and such like that but they too end up as sort of a um lost cause because the soviets occupy czechoslovakia And we're tainted by foreign ideas. <laughs> 